In this video, we look at a feature of Qualum that is one of the most interesting and unique features of the native languages of Northwest North America. Although lexical suffixes are found in all of the Salishan languages and in some of the native languages neighboring the Salishan family, there is nothing comparable to lexical suffixes in English or in any of the other European languages. Basically, lexical suffixes are suffixes that have noun-like meaning. English suffixes like the S in cats and ED in jumped have meanings like plural and past with the accented E glottal Q with the raised W in head and sun S schwa N for foot, which have more substantial noun-like meanings. Most of the lexical suffixes refer to body parts, but there are many, like I, fard L, C with the wedge, ish, for plant that refers to other important categories. There are almost 100 lexical suffixes in Klam, but only around 50 are regularly used. Lexical suffixes are unusual in the language of the world, but the concept isn't particularly difficult. Many of the column words, including some you already know, have uh, lexical suffixes built into them. If you make the effort to learn a dozen or so lexical suffixes, your column vocabulary will increase dramatically. We'll introduce a few of the most common and useful column lexical suffixes. For a complete list of column lexical suffixes, check out the column dictionary. <laughs> And another way of saying I bought my head. Many of the lexical suffixes have alternate pronunciations that depend on which vowel in a word has the stress. An important thing to be aware of with lexical suffixes is that in some words, the lexical suffix is preceded by a short suffix like the ash, a, al, that has no meaning and no known function. These probably have meaning at some time in the distant history of Qualm language, but now they have none. These are called simply stem extenders. You can find a complete list of them in the English Qualm index of the Qualm dictionary on page 717. From there, you can look up stem extenders and see the words that uses them. So first of all, note that there are two new words here, spoony, which means head, and um, is a root meaning for bump with a t-transitive suffix. Umpt means bump it. There are two ways of expressing the idea I bumped my head in Klalem. One uses the noun phrase za mskoni as in the direct object and the other uses the lexical suffix uk. The first model sentence is an ordinary transitive sentence that we have seen many times so here's a complete analysis. So would be the bump. And then sin for I, sa for the, na is, is um, possessive. So for my and skuni is head. And the second model sentence with the lexical suffix it is not transitive, though the English translation given is the same as the first. A more literal translation of the second model sentence would be, I got head bumped. And we can make the second model sentence transitive by simply adding the T or no transitive suffix. I bumped his, her, or its head. And I accidentally bumped his or her head. And once we get it transitive, we can add object suffixes such as I bumped your head. And you can specify an object in the noun phrase as usual. I bumped my friend's head. Note that the direct object is always a possessor of the thing that is indicated by the lexical suffix. There is usually a subtle difference in meaning between the two models. The one with the lexical suffix implies that the head bumping is somewhat of a regular or usual or expected event. The model sentence without the lexical suffix 
in Sanskrit only doesn't have this extra meaning. Only lexical suffixes refer to body parts can function as an object in the pattern. So for example, you can't use um, out, which is ungrammatical and it would be bump the house. Here are some new words, scald, toast, or burn. Us. To remove or take off. Shum. Wash or clean. Tuck. Hurt. Hush. And coffee. Quapi. By the way, are these four new words weak, strong, or zero stem? I'll give you a hint. Two are zero and two are weak. Off to the Quinali. And this part of the video we're going we're going over lexical suffixes in compounds. In these models, the lexical suffix isn't referring to the object of the verb. In these examples, the lexical suffix combines with the root to form a compound word with a new meaning. A compound word being like ladybug. The first example, hospital, combines the root hurt or ache with the suffix out for house, building, or room. So a hurt house is a hospital. Whenever you see a word ending with the Accented A, w, ejected W, T, X with the raised W. It almost always refers to some kind of building a room. The second example in this combines the root apples, a word borrowed from English, with the plant suffix ish. Whenever you find a new word ending in ish or sh, you can bet it refers to some kind of plant. This part I'll see with the wedge. The third and fourth example have the same root, talum, money. There are several things that need to be said about these examples. The first thing to note about the third and fourth example is that when the root ends in a vowel with a schwa, the lexical suffix begins with a vowel. The H automatically pops in between them. Talahais or talahiasen. The third example has a lexical suffix, I, for container. It also has a prefix. The prefix means something like thing for or reason for. This prefix often appears in the word with lexical suffixes when the meaning of the whole word refers to an item used for something. So here's an analysis of the third example. Talahai. S, X, and the raised W would be sing for, and then Tala, right here, Tala with H, is money, and then accented A, Y, is, is a container for, or purse, is a container, which translate to Tala Hive as purse. The fourth example also refers to an item used for something, eyeglasses. So it too has two prefix. The two prefix has several other uses, and we'll learn more about that in a later video. The fourth example has the suffix un, which occurs on many names for tools or items with a specific use. The lexical suffix in the fourth example, eyes, for eyes, you may be wondering now that money, that money, Tala, has to do with eyeglasses. There are two possible explanations for this. Eyeglasses are eyes that cost money, or it could be explained by the fact that in the old days, dollars were round and shiny, as were the lens of glasses. In any case, this example illustrates something very typical of compound words with lexical suffixes. Often the meaning of the root is very obscure. Another example, Take their word, poch, devil's club plant, used for walking stick or for charcoal to make black face paint. This clearly has a plant suffix, 
that barred owl and see with the wedge, but the root pok has no known meaning in modern Klalom aside from its use in the word. This is very this is a very common occurrence. The fifth model is a word that you are already familiar with. This is an example of a lexical suffix that basically refers to a body part, mouth in this case. When a lexical suffix is used with an extended meaning, often the nuh prefix is presented as it is in nuskleitam Hudson. The sixth model is one more example of a word with an identifiable lexical suffix used in extended meaning. The root e, perhaps it is related to the word i, good. The suffix here is the nose suffix. A narrow point of land is seen as kind of nose sticking out of the water. A broad point of the land is seen as kind of the chest sticking out into the water and the place name Aenus has the Aenus chest suffix with the same root. Hospital? Out. Out. Apple tree? Apple seed. Apple seed. Purse? Stala high. Stala high. Eye glances? Stala highs. Stala highs. And I speak Klala. No, I am Mutsu. No, I am Mutsu. That's Klala language. How do you say I speak? No, I am Mutsu. No, I am Mutsu. And then the Quinaui. No, I am Mutsu. 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 No, I am now, lexical suffixes with numbers. When talking about numbers of people, containers, dollars, plants, houses, times, and days, the number words take lexical suffixes. The body suffix, x, is used when talking about a number of things of the same kind other than people, containers, dollars, plants, houses, times, or days. The multiple of 10 suffix, sha, can be put on any number from three to nine to make the multiples of 10, 30 to 90. The word for 20 is a special form, not quas. These lexical suffixes go only on root words of numbers one through 10. Let's listen to the model sentences. Three people or three containers? Why? Why? Three dollars? Quite. Quite. Three plants? Three houses. Out. Twelve. Three times. Twice. Twice. And three days. Not. Not. Three animals or three of a kind. Tweaks. Tweaks. And thirty. Yeah. Yeah. This table summarizes the numbers. You should study this and learn these words. Several things need to be mentioned about this table. Look at the words for one person and two people. These are special forms, not to and chasa. They don't have the i suffix of the other numbers used for people. In the times column, the number for one time and two times are always different from the other, from the others. One and two do not take the ash suffix. By the way, once and twice in English are also different from three times, four times, and so on. So now look at the first two entries in the tens column. The word for ones and two, the word for one and two never take the ten suffix. There are special words for these. Also note that there are special words for ten tens, 100. If you work through some of the other recordings in Klalem, you may find other lexical suffixes used with numbers. The ones given in the chart are those in current use by Klalem speakers today. The new word used in this video, shall we? Grow. And I'll read you the Quinali. Chtalaut. Do you have money? Chtalaut. Uhoi u chsa'it. Uhoyuch sa'it.
$42. And lot tongues in atsa upena eat. And lot tongues in atsa upena eat. They gave me $10. Hey, he atst at town. Hey, he atst at town. Good. We'll go to town. And that's it for lexical suffixes. Wait.